If you are also looking for professional certified structural engineering services or courses, then don't forget to check link in description of this video. In this video, we learn the basic design criteria and requirements for the new buildings. So let's get started. This lecture provides a general structural design guide guidance for the buildings constructed of concrete, masonry and steel. Prior to the design of any building, the nature and purpose of a structure should be defined clearly. Following are some of the basic criteria that needs to be defined. Number one. Usage purpose, residential, apartments, commercial, shopping centers, hotels, recreational parks, cinema, hostels, etc. Educational schools, colleges, universities, health facilities, hospitals, clinics, etc. Industrial buildings such as factories or mills, while communicational structures such as airports or railway stations. Number two, selection of structural system. Part A, beam column frame system. It is more effective in high seismic zone, requires less number of shear walls, and it can support larger spans. Frame system undergoes less deformation, that is drift and torsion. B, building frame system with flat slabs. It requires shear wall, it has limited column or free space, limited sway, narrow seismic joints, ease of MEP services. That means if you have passing MEP services, then you can you don't need to penetrate any beam. Unlike beam column system, where we have to penetrate beams uh, to make location or space for MEP ducts or pipelines more headroom it is more feasible for parking area or shopping malls speedy construction future flexibility as you can easily manipulate the floor plan and change the partition layout according to the architecture requirements while part c is dual framing system in which the sear walls as well as the columns and the beams are part of lateral force resisting system to resist the seismic forces Number three criteria is loading. After finalizing the purpose of framing system of building, the third most important criteria should be considered is loading. Following are the types and general values of loads as per ACI code that is American Concrete Institution. Part A. Gravity loads. Gravity loads consist of dead loads. The dead load includes live load that are relatively constant over time including self weight of the structure finishes tile partition walls machine equipment generator chillers ahu units etc the gravity loads consist of live loads or imposed loads as well live loads or imposed loads are temporary or of short duration or a moving load these dynamic loads may involve considerations such as impact momentum vibration dynamics of fluids and material fatigue or vehicle loads part b lateral loads most lateral loads are live loads whose main component is horizontal force acting on the structure typical lateral loads are wind load earthquake load the earth pressure whether active pressure or passive pressure acting on underground or retaining structures while the wind load and earthquake load acts on the structures that are above the ground. Part C is environmental loads. There are certain loads that act as a result of weather or surrounding conditions such as snow, rain, ice loads, temperature changes or thermal load, frost heaving, groundwater or bulk materials, loads from fluids or floods, permafrost melting. Densities of material utilized are concrete 150 pound per cubic foot, water 62.4 pound per cubic foot, soil 120 to 100 pound per cubic foot, lock 144 pound per cubic foot. It is also the well no noticed that the values are given in kilogram per meter cube as well. Selection of foundation type is the fourth most important criteria when designing the buildings. 
type of foundation is selected on the basis of geotechnical report and type of structure type of foundations which can be used with buildings are isolated footing strip or combined footing raft foundation pile foundation continuous wall footing for load bearing structure building codes structural building codes include the codes that specifies the guidelines for design of the structure american code in concrete institution or aci 318 is the code utilized for reinforced concrete design in many countries there are multiple concrete codes such as euro codes british standards australian standards american society for civil engineers and american national standard specifies or asce code specifies the loading conditions or different criteria for checking the serviceability of the buildings uniform building code ubc 97 ibc code or asce code for earthquake and wind loading refers also as asc 7 code american institute of steel construction it is utilized for steel structure and composite structure design also referred as aisc structural load combinations as per aci 318 for structural design including foundation is given as follows the loading combination are based on lrfd that is load resistance factor design we have discussed the difference between lrfd and asd in another video right now the loading combinations include gravitational load as well as lateral load which we already discussed the first load is dead load plus floor load floor load is the live load dead load plus floor load plus temperature load plus 1.6 of live load plus roof live load plus snow load or rain load h is the horizontal force similarly other loading combinations are specified also s specifies snow load here and w specifies wind load here e specifies earthquake load here you can refer to aci 318 code for further details material properties concrete concrete strength based on 6 by 12 inch cylinder at 28 days concrete strength 3000 to 8000 psi is being used in pakistan or uae or in united states creep shrinkage properties aci standards crack moment of inertia for the different material or the members as models in softwares is given as 0.7 of gross moment of inertia for column 0.35 of gross moment of inertia for beams and 0.7 of gross moment of inertia for shear walls to be considered when modeling structural finite element models in softwares based on aci code to consider the cracking in the building structures reinforcing steel grade 60 or 70 ksi deformed bars in conformance with american society of testing material standard a615 or a706 or british standard 4449 the elastic modulus of steel is 29000 ksi or 200000 megapascal almost ft over fr should be greater than or equal to 1.15 to 1.35 the bars used have mostly sizes of number 3 which refers to 3 by 8 inches diameter number four number five number seven and number eight this is one inch diameter bar similarly in millimeter system or mks system bundle bar are also accepted in code but more not permitted in lab splices for four bar or more than four bar bundles as there would be a lot of jungle of bars and wouldn't allow concrete to properly pass and bond between the bars and the concrete would be weak Use mechanical bar splices where appropriate. Typical floor framing deflections. Reinforce concrete floor framing. Limit total immediate plus long term deflection due to all loads as span divided by 240. This includes the total dead load as well as live load deflection. Similarly, the code limits immediate plus long term deflection due to only live load as span divided by 360. 
along with the length of masonry partition limited immediate plus long term deflection due to super dead load and live load to span divided by 600 or 0.3 inches 8 mm maximum after walls are built this is an additional check based on the practical experience not given in the code so far construction tolerance to be determined a minimum tolerance must meet aci and aisc criteria so these are the basic requirements which we had to discuss according to american standards